news and nerds. This is Seeing and Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. Happy Victory Monday. My Panthers won. <laughs> <laughs> because you weren't watching them, but you were listening to them on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that may be my, my, my go-to move for the rest of the season. I was listening to the radio network. I was thinking, coming back from dropping my kid off uh was home for the weekend and uh back at college and uh yeah yeah i think that might be my go-to move <laughs> well they're actually yeah. playing in Ger- yeah they're actually playing in germany this week so uh for playing against playing the giants so it's going to be a early sunday morning game for for me so it's going to be yeah. so like we're bumping the, ele- uh, the our podcast recording up tonight to, due to the election um i so i did my normal sunday routine of Agatha in the morning and Penguin at night. Yeah. And I, um, in between, I told you I got a haircut. Right. And then I um, I come home and I'm like, okay, so what should I randomly throw on? And I had seen, been seeing clips. You mm-hmm. know me. I, I know like, you. like, the universe has to be telling me, not will, but the universe has to tell me <laughs> that I need to watch something. So there's these clips, and and I figured out the name of the show. I never heard of it. I never seen any promotion about this damn show outside of these random t- uh, clips that had come up on my for you page on uh, online. So, okay. so on TikTok mainly. Okay. And the show is called Rivals. Have you heard hmm. about this? I have. Oh, you I've, have heard about Rivals. I've heard about it, but I, I haven't watched a single minute of it. Uh, but I, I've, I've seen it like maybe, uh, yeah, same kind of thing where it was just like maybe popped up on my timeline or whatever. It didn't really, I mean, it just was just there, but I don't know too much about it. Yeah. Go. So essentially, see, and I've watched, I haven't finished it. I think it's eight episodes long. Um, and I think I'm at the start of episode four. Because they're long ass episodes in my opinion, but it's on Hulu, mm-hmm. and um, it's British. <laughs> so there are moments when I I still have my subtitles on <laughs> because there are moments when I have no idea what they're saying, <laughs> no idea, idea. And um, so he, he, here's the funny thing. Okay, so rewind and go back a little weeks, every a few weeks, everyone. And, and I told you about a different show on Hulu. I t- this little show called Tell Me Lies and how much yep. freaking nudity and sex there was. Right. This is like, if I had to compare, because this is what really caught me off guard about this whole rival show. And I'll get to the plot, but I just have to say, <laughs> this is like... If Tell Me Lies was centered around middle-aged British people, mm-hmm. yeah, it would be the same show. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much sex. So much sex and so many, I mean, you have about, it's. they did a really good job in terms of you have these marriages. Mm-hmm. Um, and it becomes very clear in five, two, the first two episodes maybe even the first episode alone, that the marriages all have their strengths and their weaknesses. And no, none of them are perfect. There's a lot of cheating. There's a mm-hmm. lot of, um, there's, there's a lot of affairs happening. And, um, and, and I just was a little bit shocked again by and I'm not a prude, but there's something about these TV shows where I'm just like, what is Hulu doing right now? <laughs> you know, it's funny you bring that up to me. I know there's been a lot of, there has been some discussion uh, about like how much sex or lack thereof it, there has been in, 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 in some recent productions and shows and stuff. But it sounds like you, you stumbled upon two here recently that uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> but yeah, but. And what I will say, though, that especially because comparing Tell Me Lies to Rivals Mm -hmm. is that Tell Me Lies, there's a lot of sex scenes, but the sex scenes aren't really in a way connected to 
explaining the relationship, okay? Mm. Okay. Between two characters. What I thought was was interesting um was there was a whole montage of and I'm and I'm being serious about sex scenes. Like you saw at the end I think of episode 1, you see flashes of each couple <laughs> um or <laughs> or or what you think will be a couple and turns out someone's having an affair. <laughs> and but you can tell why the relationship is is the way it is just just based on the sexual positions and how uh, each each character is behaving in that which which I had never seen done before and I was like okay that's an interesting way yeah. to uh, because it paints it paints a picture of honesty mm -hmm. um about mm -hmm. it and it's not necessarily just to show nudity or a sex scene for the purpose of it no this is like what at honestly at the core the show is about is about these couples who or this this circle of friends who are in there having these midlife crises and still trying to figure out who they are mm -hmm. and, and what love is um mm -hmm. especially in a very class-based system like um like uh england and london yeah. in particular right. um which they do a good job and so this show is also set in the 80s, the 1980s. Okay. So that's another reason why I still don't really know characters' names because it's about two... <laughs> why, how I ended up getting this show wrecked me, I'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, so yeah, what's, what, what, are you, what are you watching on your algorithm there? <laughs> I don't know the, the, the rivalry between yeah. these two people i know david tennant plays one of them okay. um and is doing a very good job um you mentioned last week you watched jessica jones and yeah. Yeah. his character in jessica jones there's a turn at one point with his character on this show where you're like oh like like you meet the two main protagonists mm -hmm. the rivals if you say mm -hmm. and one of them you like and one of them you don't and then as the slow show progresses i i feel as though they purposely start to make that change where uh, it's like suddenly like oh you're not the good guy okay and you're not like like none of these people are good and and again that's where I, it probably reminds me of tell me lies where mm -hmm. but it's also how how they go about navigating their own flaws in a, in a way so anyway long story short i i watched rivals i'll probably finish it i'm not necessarily recommending it it's very it's very different <laughs> and then, like i said i don't really know a lot of the characters names i don't really know what this sh and that maybe that's why i do find it a bit interesting is because i'm like hopefully by the end of it i'll understand the true rivalry that's going on because i've never heard of any of these people mm. granted it's british and it's it's occurring in the 1980s so okay. way before cool. my time yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i was looking at while you were talking about it, i was looking at the uh looking at the imdb and i was just looking at the cast and you know just to take it bring it back to since we are you know pr primarily comic book com tv show com uh, podcast uh so i were actually one of the, i think i know where i remember seeing it now uh it was uh nafisa williams um yeah she, she was in black yep. like lightning yeah yeah that's i think i saw yep. it on her like okay. instagram page it took me at least two or three episodes to figure that out because yeah. I was suddenly like, okay, it's driving me crazy. I know you. I yeah. know you. Where are you from? And as soon as I looked that up, I was like, yep, that makes sense now. Yeah. Yeah. Very, like, it's not a very different character from what I remember. Mm. Um, but see, the show also reminds me to an extent of the morning show mm. and there's another character that the cameron who she plays on rivals reminds mm. me of on that show okay um so yeah it's it 
it, even though it's so <laughs> pun intended foreign to me, <laughs> um, there's still this familiarity, whether it be her or whether it be like the fact that David Tennant right. is right um, in that position and at the head. Um, or it's just that I watched Tell Me Lies, and so I'm used to watching a bunch of sex crazed, horrible people <laughs> screw each <laughs> other over, both figuratively and literally. Yeah, so yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah. I don't know what is going on with Hulu right now, but if if you're suddenly like, I need to watch two people having sex, Hulu has shows. <laughs> 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 you know, good, yeah, just just go your go go on your favorite streaming platform instead of, instead of having to go on the internet. You can just do right that. <laughs> I have been keeping track of yeah. all the shows I've been watching, and I've also been keeping track of what streaming platform they're on. Because I'm curious by the end of this year, if I look at everything, where where did the most what what um what sh- what streaming platform did I watch the most? And I'm only tracking new shows, so yeah. Yeah. rewatch is thrown out the window or shows from previous years. So probably I rewatched The Bear season two twice this year. So neither of those watches count right. um, for Hulu. But and then also I'm curious if by the end of the year the shows like my top five. Mm-hmm. Will they be all centered on one platform or will they be spread out or will yeah. like three be on one and one be on another and then one on the other? So, That's yeah, I'm yeah. I'm curious about the streaming wars that are happening. Yeah, yeah, it will be interesting. I was just, I was just working on our schedule for uh, the rest of the year and I was just I, I was looking at the looking at our December calendar and I was like, oh, man, it's what our our our, our top uh because it's not going to be movies this year because I haven't seen any. So it's going to be a very TV, TV heavy list this year. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to do a K drama because I, and we'll yeah. talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about that. But yeah. Yeah. there's no, there's no, nothing about K dramas. But I will, I will explain why later this year. Um, before we get into the shows that we have to talk about and we have a lot to say about, Will wants me to just mention this, um, not because I've watched this, but because he wants me to mention this. Um, the Star Wars Skeleton Crew trailer number two is online. Yeah, cool. yeah, it, yeah, very cool, very <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, you know, I, I threw this on here. Usually, you know, uh, it, it's the well, has she or hasn't she watched this trailer? <laughs> and notice I didn't put the Marvel one on there because I don't think either. I, I mean, you may have watched it. I know I have not. Uh, as far as the Marvel, I actually have. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. We'll see. Here we go. Yeah, in my so. in my very roundabout way. Yeah. I have. <laughs> <laughs> At least once or twice. Like maybe. Okay. okay. I guess. I guess I watched three quarters of it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I haven't. I think maybe no. I, ha, I think I like whenever I just happened to retweet it. I like saw the first few like seconds of it, and that was about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, but I did watch the Star Wars trailer, uh, Skeleton Tree tra- to trailer. Actually, what got me to do it? I saw. Well, they did release the poster. I guess it was maybe Friday, and then um, and I guess the second trailer dropped. And actually, it was a, a reactor. Um, I was actually I wa- the first time I did watch the trailer was just a trailer reaction, just with a YouTuber that um, uh, that I met through uh, our friends over at A Plus. Um, um, opinions. Opinions, yeah. Um, had 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 on their Star Wars show, uh, uh, Crystal Cyber. So. Yeah, so I watched her trailer reaction to it, and then I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, they had the the score, which was, um, you know, made it had the song "Major Tom." It was uh, from the '80s, uh, which of course this trailer, you know, if you saw the first trailer, and now the second trailer definitely has like the whole '80s Goonies vibe, um, and um, also as far as more recent shows, I would say it reminded me a lot of Star Trek Prodigy because there are kids in this in this series. And uh, when I saw the second trailer, it reminded me a lot of the premise that uh, was behind Star Trek Prodigy, which is an animated show. 
uh, that uh, just wrapped up a season two not too long ago. Not sure if Netflix is going to renew it for a season three. I hope they do. But um, the two showrunners behind it decided to do another project um, uh, for, I think, Disney or somebody else. Uh, I don't know if it's, it, that season two, season three may not happen, or if it does, it may be way, way off in the future. But getting back to Star Wars, yeah, I thought it was, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this series. Uh, I think it definitely looks like it's going to be something that's different from, you know, it's clearly set in the Star Wars universe, but, uh, you know, definitely had a little meta moments with all the 80s vibes that's going on. And like I said, you know, using the, doing a song dubbed in uh, Star Wars language uh, from the 80s, uh, you know, brought kind of real world into the Star Wars world, which was kind of like, oh, okay, which, you know, they do that every now and then. I mean, you know, Han Solo's famous line, see you in hell, and Empire Strikes Back. So, you know, they have those meta moments like that. But, um, yeah, it, it, it prepared to premieres December 3rd, and I'll have two episodes to uh, kick us off. So, there you go. Find it very interesting that you're going to make me watch another Star Wars show. I we, I always have, we always have a choice. <laughs> I did my time with Acolyte. Yeah, yeah. yeah Don't make yeah. promises you can't keep well. Don't make yeah. promises. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was lucky to have it. You know, a holiday hard. break will come right before <laughs> before we get too deep into this. Just, I just will point out, I will point out, like, I also say that because our longtime listeners will probably have probably been keeping notes that so far we have promised to return to Invincible, haven't yep. returned to Invincible. And then up until we off show decided, um, we were fully intended in August for me to finish um, watching The Acolyte, um, but that never happened. So yeah, funny, yeah. funny. Yeah. Anyway, but shows <laughs> that I did finish watching all the way through, Let's start with Agatha All Along, the final two episodes, the first one, episode eight, Follow Me, My Friend, The Glory at the End. Essentially, this can be summed up, this is the end of the road. And (laughs) we we talk about this all the time. Like, these shows continue to be defined by their their ending. Mm -hmm. And arguably, Agatha All Along with the last three, four episodes, so basically half of the season or a fair amount, and it did start off strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. It it demolished <laughs> some of the some of the endings and some of the seasons that we've received on Disney Plus from the MCU over the last like year and a half. Um, yeah. I mean, this is this is on on par with Loki endings um because no one and and maybe it's because i've also very much am looking at things like i don't want to hear people talk about i don't want to hear theory spouse but i swear i don't know if this what the twist the ending was on anyone's bingo card no i don't think so I mean, even though the breadcrumbs are right, if you're talking about Billy being the one who conjured I'm up the road. I'm talking about the road. Yeah, the yeah, actual yeah. road. Because yeah. because the whole death of it all, like, like that, I put that on, on a B storyline almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, it's important for very many reasons. But the big revelation, and, and it's ironic because the show is called Agatha Long when really... At the end of the day, it was Billy all along this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Agatha's line too. It's just like you did, you know, you, you did something interesting with your powers <laughs> that your yeah, mom did. Yeah, I played your mother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and last week or the other week when we were talking about the tower reversed mm-hmm. episode, as I like to call it, uh, Lilia's episode, we. We talked about how like all these breadcrumbs were there and but nobody was paying attention enough to really have already put together or those pieces. And so mm-hmm. that's what made this revelation so much sweeter is that yeah. it hits you and it's like, I see all the logic. Yeah. That's amazing. And 
And then it just increases rewatchability because people mm-hmm. will want to watch from the beginning so they can see everything that they missed or things will stand out in a different way. Yep. And it's just, I, I was, and, and also on top of it, on top of it, like the, we're talking about the very end of episode eight is when yeah. Billy returns home and he looks in his room and all of the pieces are there. And it's just mm-hmm. like, and then you hear the line from Lilia of saying, you're the magician and you wanted this. So mm-hmm. you made it happen. Yeah. But on top of it, it's just like, okay, well that felt like a very like, aha end of season <laughs> cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> but yeah. no, no it, they were like, you probably also, because I'll admit, I was also like, wait, wait, can I clarify? So he made, like, yeah. what? Huh? Yeah. Like, I needed the final episode, which is truly Agatha's episode, mm-hmm. and to really put the pieces all together, mm-hmm. because you're you're just like, oh, so now I get it. Yeah. So... The way they were, like, the road was a con for Agatha. Mm -hmm. And it had been buried. The the con became a myth, became a legend. And then Billy took that and made it into a reality. And it's just, oh, so well done. So, so well done, yeah. And as soon as I finished uh, the episode, both episodes, I was like, Perfect. I'm so glad that they had these drop back to back. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, because they really, you know, it really was like, you know, it, it was, it felt like a, a movie and, 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 and a complete story. And, and the other thing too, that I really, really enjoyed about it was, you know, I, I kind of joked during over the course of our reviews Oh yeah, well you know we'll get the Marvel usual third act and you know fireworks and you know blah blah blah, but they didn't do that. I mean yes, there was a Marvel third act fight in in the episode eight, but you know all of it was like basically we just saw the flashes when Death like threw Billy over into the greenhouse. So you know so we had those moments, but you know, but that wasn't the focal point. I mean, it was all about the story and all about the breadcrumbs and like, like you said, I mean, it was just the, 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 the really how he conjured things from you know, the, 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 the ultimate con game that, you know, then the con artist that, that, that Agatha is, um, mm-hmm. was just, was just brilliant stroke i mean as far as like you know you know we're going into that episode eight i was like oh you know we will we will you know i was anticipating you know i was i was anticipating the showdown between agatha and death and i was thinking like oh yeah we're gonna get a tommy like show up i never did i I will say i never thought wanda was going to show up because i think they made this very clear that this is this is not Wanda's story now. It's about, even though Wanda's presence is there clearly, but I never, I, I, I was really hoping that they wouldn't go there and I'm glad it did not go there. So yeah, I, I was, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, I would just like to say that I never thought we would see Tommy. I never thought we would see Wanda or vision. I don't know why, but that possibility never happened in my mind i i thought like in a way the way they ended episode eight i was just like oh my god we have one more episode thank god yeah Yeah. (laughs) it felt like like a finale it it really did and and that's why like i had kind of checked out of the fight but at the same time the fight in my opinion was so short Mm -hmm. that it was perfect because you just needed to get to that point where Agatha tells him um, she's going to sacrifice herself. Yeah. And and then there's the double cross. Mm-hmm. And you need the double cross. And then you need that moment of her actual sacrificing herself. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because of of her uh what she couldn't do for her son essentially yeah. and yeah. it's and just I, like I, like that was the big moment of the fight it's it wasn't necessarily about the powers and them going one on one it was more about that like because and they set that up at the very beginning of the episode when you have this very what felt like the longest scene in the entire episode um maybe is between her and death and rio at the very beginning and you're getting these hints about how like why is death still here and it's because what i found so interesting is it's because billy's an abomination mm -hmm. and she wants to remove him and make sure and guarantee he can't bring Tommy, the Tommy um, back. Right. And it's just, right. I like that. Those were other things. I never thought about that. I mean, like I had just naturally assumed he jumped into somebody's body too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I yeah. think that was, or, yeah, I think yeah. that was very or important. Death, oh, like death wanted him gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but sorry, um, go ahead. I I was rambling a little bit much. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I was just going to pick up that point about death wanting him gone and, and and making it very clear that to Agatha that he had to make the choice, you know, because, um, you know, she if he you know because if 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 he if she just if you know if Agatha takes him out, then he can just reincarnate himself and they, we start this whole thing over again. So it really get to that point about right. the abomination. And then the other thing too, that you were talking about the fight that, that I just wanted to bring up, what made that scene so strong and worked so well, especially how, you know, how they built up to it uh, early on in the episode, um, you know, just to, to reinforce the points we were talking about with the, the uh, Agatha bringing him in is, mm -hmm. um, and really sets up the sets up the, the the second episode as well is when Billy like gets you know gets into Agatha's head and and you know and it questions uh, is this how Nick died? Nicky died. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because again, that just you know I think it, it, it wait, wanted wait, to wait, show. Wait. This, yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. I thought for some reason we had moved on to episode nine for a moment, but no. Uh -huh. Yeah. That. That was that was what allowed her to actually self-sacrifice herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. So I just thought those were just really just you know just to go back to that point earlier. I get, get I just wanted to really you know reinforce why I thought the the what what made this penultimate episode um, just work so on, on so many levels. Um, again, it's just all, all it's just all the character all the character beats and and it really just like pulls all those little th all the all the various threads that we had all up to in the prior seven episodes and things that were said things that were done you know i i just felt they were all very satisfying payoffs uh in in this right. episode and to the point where i was just like wait a minute <laughs> you know I, I knew we had one more episode to go but i was like okay they did all this in episode eight i mean what the what the hell are they gonna do in episode nine because yeah you know, yeah, because you know we we also learn about uh, Jen, you know Agatha bonding Jen. Um, that whole thing was just like, yeah. well, well, I I forgot, or I I was just I had to make some money. Yeah, <laughs> just, the, all of her, and and you really feel for Jen as she's doing the unbinding mm -hmm. spell, and I feel as though. That scene in particular between her and Agatha just showcases why even as early as WandaVision, you could tell that Catherine Hahn in this part just needed more time because she walks such a fascinating line that's very difficult to do of where you actually like Agatha. Mm -hmm. Even though you know she's a complete phony con artist bitch, <laughs> like <laughs> she she she's not a good person. No. But there's also something about her her almost 
flat out ownership mm -hmm. like um we're like yeah i, I did it whatever moving yeah. on like yep. what do you expect that you're just like okay well at least she's not sitting in here denial yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> but, and and it's just it's not like she's not bad but she's she's not good either um i every time i think about and um the anti-hero mm -hmm. do you know do you know what the first thought comes to my mind do you uh, do you <laughs> okay it's a, it's a movie Shige? that i don't think huh go ahead go ahead no go ahead no 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 it's not yaba shuge no 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 okay. no we're okay. not talking about the penguin quite yet okay. but <laughs> no it what my I, my honest to god first thought is a movie that i don't think neither of us have seen but we've seen the trailers so black adam <laughs> <laughs> Oops, just I because i it. know i yeah. know from people who watch that movie that they did not do a good job and he never really was the bad guy mm. even though so so and but she is well simultaneously no, I wouldn't say being the hero, but being that our protagonist. So it's just, yeah. it's, she, they, they do such a good job between her performance because she goes from like brushing it off to Jen starting the spell. And the longer it goes on, you see it through her face, like Agatha's, it, you see glimmers of, of um, remorse almost yeah. yeah and and then and then jen gets her powers and disappears and then you have this moment where you're like oh okay so this is where she's gonna get billy to turn himself over to death okay but no that doesn't happen she actually they start to let's find tommy let's do mm -hmm. this let's bring that tommy and and this is leads into something that between both episodes i thought was really clever um, was Billy is now more like Agatha than his mm -hmm. own mom. Yep. It's, yep. but, but even maybe, maybe that's not right because there was this little old movie called Dr. Strange 2 where Wanda went a little cuckoo. So, <laughs> so maybe that's not completely right, but there's, she, like they and and it's not for better <laughs> necessarily no no because no, like the realization that he's the person who made up the road well you uh therefore then killed mrs hart yep um which thank god they kept that going with agatha not knowing who sharon was <laughs> <laughs> my my, yeah. my only my only gripe about this whole finale is at the end when they make the memorial and inscribe all the names, they put Sharon Hart. They should have yeah. put the gardener lady. Yeah. The other green, the and, other green witch. <laughs> yeah. And, and during them trying to find Tommy, you suddenly start to see, see and hear through Billy like his hesitation like wait a second like there's this person he's in trouble he it's it's he's in a bad place mm -hmm. but he has to die for my brother to be reborn yeah. like how fucked up is that yeah yeah that's something that didn't see coming at all either mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, that yeah that that's those 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 questions i think is another thing reason why this show just really like just really resonated with me because it, it it really you know in that moment where billy is trying to figure out like you know does ask the question you know am i killing this boy so my brother can live and then also you know he, he literally does have blood on his hands other than other than jen but uh and it, and you are you are right i mean i know it it, it Yes, Wanda did have her moments in Doctor Strange too, but I mean Billy takes it to the next level. As far as just you know, yes, they both they both have the same thing in con, you know, with. But I guess I guess I guess in Wanda's case, you know, she conjured up Westview and the and the hex, you know, out of grief, mm -hmm. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I guess even in this episode. Oh. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Billy did too. Yeah, Billy also conjured. It was a grief uh, of of losing of losing, you know, losing his brother. Yeah, and and arguably, by the end of the next episode, we realize that the whole road song and dance was created mm -hmm. out of grief yep. over Agatha losing her her son. Yep. Yeah. Like. And then that just takes you back to anybody who's been watching both Wanda sh WandaVision and this show, the mm -hmm. penultimate episode of WandaVision, where it talks about grief yep. uh, and love in mm -hmm. the one of the most poetic conversations ever on screen. So yep. it's just like, thank God Jack Schaefer was the showrunner for both of these shows. Mm -hmm. And and I know I know Vision Quest is quote unquote on the horizon. Put her there too. <laughs> yeah, she should consult with Terry Metalis. I I I I'm confident that Terry will will get it right. Just seeing the work that he did with Star Trek Picard season three. So I'm I'm not okay. worried there. Yeah. Okay. Well, but let her have some consultation because I don't know. So far, she's just a two for two on this with yep. these characters she knows them so well or or this it's not even the characters it's this world of yep. west view um and i just like into episode nine maiden mother come so we we start off with with the flashback to the literal birth scene another thing that i don't know what's going on but this is like between this show and House of Dragons, I've seen so many bursts on TV over the last <laughs> few years. <laughs> now, granted, traumatic, this one tra was traumatic bursts of that, yeah. Yeah, this one could have been more dramatic, but it, it yeah. didn't. It felt more like it just like, and then she pushed and popped right out, and like, well, nah, it's not, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but it's it's interesting. The more we talk about these two episodes, and specifically Billy and, and Agatha and their arcs and their similar motivations at the end, um, what, Agatha says to Nikki, as a little, little baby who can't talk back, um, I didn't cast a spell or an incantation. I made you... I made you um, from scratch. Yeah. How much do you think that is true? Uh, yeah, you know, whenever she said that, I, I'm i trying to think back to, because I watched the show on Halloween, so it's been a few days. Um, mm -hmm. I know what, I, 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 that line stuck out to me, uh, that he was, uh, that basically I thought he was a natural birth. Um and, and so, which may, I think, which makes the, when when, re, when death comes to, to take him, I think that that just adds to, to the deeper, for me, it, it added a deeper level for, like, why he, you know, why Nikki was just so special. Um, and also, it, it, it shuts up another contrast between her and Wanda. Mm-hmm. Uh, was really what I think maybe at the, at the real, when I think back, I think that was the thing that really, that, that stuck out to me uh, whenever she said that when, when I was watching the episode. I, the more I talk about these episodes and the more I think about everything we're shown, I'm a good 60-40 and I'm mm -hmm. leaning more towards no, she didn't cast a spell, she didn't do an incantation, but she did something. Mm -hmm. Because there is never a mention of the father. Yeah. There, there, there's nothing. And then, and then I think about it like death really wanted Billy to go because he's an abomination. Mm -hmm. We get no indication as to why, why Nikki had to die. Right. Like we saw, we quote unquote saw the birth. He looked mm -hmm. perfectly fine. It was like, yeah. what? What is happening? Or maybe, or maybe it wasn't gonna be fine. And then death was like, okay, I'll give you time. Mm -hmm. But 
still there was it was just it was weird it and and maybe I'm just playing into what they want you to think want you to question as they clearly have set up for season two to go find Tommy at the end of this yeah. but you're I just and the fact that if we go back to the episode eight for her to get out of the last trial she in a way didn't do a spell or incantation to an extent her own tears like managed to grow like create this this plant yeah yeah um so and and she was saying something about i forget the exact lines that she was saying about how she was able to do that um and that's what ended that trial and it was to help with like another thing that my mind keeps going back to is is the locket has a piece of hair in it mm -hmm. and that is from nikki mm -hmm. that hair is very well preserved <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure for yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and yeah. it just there and 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 i'm just gonna throw that she, she's also clearly a lesbian so oh, yeah. oh, I, don't, yeah. I mean yeah i mean the, the I queerness of this show was like on full display <laughs> yeah so i i honestly just can't see her with a man yeah so unless she just had a donor i mean you know that that could have happened well it, it was also the 1750s so yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> she, it's not like she traveled to the future for modern day mesh and i no, need a donor no no no, no, no. <laughs> she's just like yeah i was just or i mean or i mean or maybe you know i mean it maybe it could have been just an immaculate conception i mean you and that maybe that's why this is called the maiden mother mm -hmm. but but again immaculate conception or not does that still mean that the kid is an abomination? Like, I, I like to, I see on one hand how it's very interesting if it's not. And she did what Wanda couldn't. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know if it's, I would, I'm starting to wonder if it's even better if it's not. And that both of them did this thing um, because at the end of the day, all they really wanted was was family, and they had so much grief. I yeah. don't know. It's just it's fascinating. It is. Um, I, um, the more the more we really think about it, and like I said, I'm so glad there's a season two, and and I'm also glad that you know to go back to the last episode or episode eight, the big fight. They also killed Agatha. Yeah. <laughs> They did. Yeah, she went. She yeah. Which I think. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 I said yeah. They killed. They did kill her. And, and I think you know. They and they you know, the I think in the locket wasn't there also like the dandelion piece too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go back to her because you know she went back to her original form, which was you know she came of the earth, and then she went you know after the kiss yep. of death, she went back to the earth. So. Um, yep. Yeah, and. And something, so episode nine is a lot about, it's set, is a, a lot set in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and and we great, get a great montage sequence of after Nikki dies, of Agatha, like being first encountered by a witch who wants to, to, her to take her to the road. Mm -hmm. And then we see the, the con play out to the song. And and I kept and a thought came to my mind earlier today yeah. that the very first episode when we're introduced to want, uh, to Agatha in Westview mm -hmm. where where she was left it was her investigating a murder of yep. a woman in mm -hmm. the woods mm -hmm. and then you see the black fingers and it's like oh that was a witch this is yeah. a murder witch. Bravo. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Bravo. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so good. It's just, I mean, maybe I don't know when, but maybe I'll rewatch this season. But the more I think about it, the more they they had so much that they just teased out in the 
one of the best paced seasons yes. that I've seen in a bit. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and you're right, and 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 it was best paced, one of the best paced seasons. Um, you know, I, I, one of the things I thought too as I was watching the this episode was like, you know, you put the origin story of Agatha at the in the finale. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and 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 seeing how the song evolved with the con yeah. o- over time, and 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 Nikki's like, you know, questioning why you know why are we doing this and 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 yeah. questioning you know and and then ultimately um her, why you know her motivations again like we were talking about before is grief and then also just avoidance of. You know, she, when she, you know, after Nikki dies, she takes it, you know, each, you know, coven that she has. And I'm so, and I see now why they changed, they went back to Agatha all along instead of Agatha Coven of Chaos, as far mm-hmm. as the title, because as I was, I was like, okay, because every coven that she had, that she builds, she, you know, she draw, takes her power so she can just continue to avoid this, avoid having to, um deal with nikki's death and 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 even to the place where even after episode eight she's you know you know unlike rio and and lila and you know other people that death has has taken you know agatha still figures out a way to like not die and, and you know becomes a ghost and now she's in purgatory <laughs> so it, yeah. I think it was just a perfect ending well, um you know because generally ghosts yeah so I, I just really thought that was just like it made sense to me how this how this how this first season ended uh yeah. because it's just yes there was there was growth for agatha but at the end of the day she still there's still more for this character to to do even though she made that sacrifice uh, in episode eight yeah because because there's also still more for Billy to do. Mm-hmm. And there and I what I was gonna say when you brought up the fact that she was able to escape death again and come back as a witch and still hold on is well, we have to remember, like Death pointed out to her in episode eight very early on, she's had the most special treatment of anyone. Yeah. So like their relationship has a lot to do with with how how Agatha is able to avoid death. Um, yeah. and, and that's something that they've arguably have held the back the most on of just really because we never got to see them meet. We didn't get a meet cute. We got a meet end. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we we got more, but there's still something there. So it's it's um they they have definitely allowed um a continuation while at the same time uh the the start and end of a chapter that where it's like and now we're gonna go on to the next chapter um because it really was billy all along (laughs) yeah (laughs) for sure for sure yeah (laughs) oh i was also gonna say it should have never been a coven of chaos I like Agatha all along because they got the double A's, but yeah. but come on, why couldn't it have been Agatha Coven, Covenless Witch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Well, then that would have told us all, like you know, that would have. I mean, it told us so many other things if we had just been paying attention. But <laughs> right, but, right. Uh, well, yeah, how do yeah. you know the, the yeah. number of things they told us that we we are like. Are we yeah. the only ones who recognize that but didn't really take it in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like we said mm-hmm. last week with this show, I mean, it, I, you know, it wasn't a show like what, what I think you put it best. It's like it wasn't a show that I knew I needed, but I'm glad I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm I am glad, and it and it I'm glad that it also aired in simultaneously with the Penguin. Yeah, because. Yeah. For a lot of the things that I just went on and on about Agatha and that line, Penguin does the same thing yeah. in a much arguably R-rated way, but a much more aggressive way, a darker way. But it is still, th- these two characters are very similar. 
mm -hmm. um, in that extent. And the premises of the show are very similar. Um, and that leads us into the Penguin Episode 7 Top Hat. And we, like, I love it. Like, I, I think early on I said I don't want flashbacks, but they're choosing the right flashbacks and we're not hanging out with them too long because mm -hmm. while I'm sitting here trying to figure out the father and we will talk about my theory game because I have a new one. I still think it's Rex. I still think it's Rex. That, the, the, the child actor who plays the penguin yeah. looks very much like the actor who we saw play Rex and his brothers did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, but it's not just that they had this flashback and we see the family, the nuclear unit together, minus the dad. But it's also that I had never thought, oh, or question. Like, I didn't really think too long and hard about the question of how did how did Oz's brothers actually die? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we and, I know we we theorized that it has something to do with Rex, um, but you know, or we you know, we, but uh, we never really like went too too deep into that. No, no, yeah. and 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 it was a question that we got answered. <laughs> Didn't even Joke know we had that old. question. Oh yeah, and, did we get it answered? Yeah, we. Yeah, it it got it got answered because Oz. Being Oz, mm -hmm. how old do you think he was? Like, are we talking ten? Yeah, I guess older. He's maybe maybe eleven. Yeah, he's like the middle brother because I mean Jack's the yeah. oldest clearly, and then Benny was the baby. So yeah, probably yep. 11, 12 years old, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 they go off because mom's got work to do and the boys can't be home. Yeah. And they and the mom is clearly working for Rex. And when I say working, I mean doing the books. And when I say yep. doing the books, literally doing the books, okay? No, we're not talking about tell me lies or rivals right now, okay? <laughs> Even though I do have suspicions about, yeah. Anyways, um, and you, you see moments of the clear Oz needs to be an only child. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> um, Very clear, and yeah. The great, great casting for the kids. Great mm -hmm. casting. And and then we 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 go back into the tunnels, and it's raining, and you know, you know what's what's happening. Um, and then yeah, I don't know why the oldest thought this was a great idea to hide in a location that would be even more difficult for Oz to get to because of his leg. Yeah. Um, and so Oz being Oz gets upset at that and decides, well, well, if if you want to do that, well, then I'm going to I'm going to lock you in there and good luck in and out and the boys drown. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. 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 Yeah. I mean, so a couple of things before I ask you this question um, about this. You, know, you, made, you made a good point about the, the his infirmity. Um, and, and also, you know, because, but in, in the mom, I just love the way they sort of set that scene up, um, with the boys, the brothers dynamic, because, you know, she was like, you know, encouraging us to get up, go outside and play while she was trying to do the books. And then whenever they come in, they really, you know, whenever, you know, she gets up, play, they play the zombie games and stuff and poor Oz is sitting over there. So again, it just sets up all those things and, it, and, it, and, it, and it just, again, bookends, the the beginning of the series and things that we've seen throughout so you know so for me it was sort of like you know with with this episode and also just thinking back over the series and gets to my question for you is uh is it nature or nurture as far as like with these characters um with oz sophia vic but also whenever you know we know oz has impulse control issues and we saw that <laughs> again which I think that's just this is nature. But um, do you think he intended to kill his brothers or do you think it was like one of those things like 
he just like was just pissed off, you know, fuck him. And then, and then, you know, once the rain started happening and stuff and he started watching Top Hat, you know, and because of the relationship that he does have with his mother, he was sort of like, you know what? Really like, fuck him. <laughs> did, did he think he intended to kill him or you think it was an accident? Or do you think he came to it, you know, while they were sitting there watching Top Hat? Oh, um, the the last one for sure. Okay, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought. Yeah. I, I think the the whole looking um, back and forth at the mm-hmm. window um, kind of made it clear, like he was definitely going his mind, like, do I say something? Do I not? Do I say yeah. something? Do I not? But it then just kept going on and on and yeah. on and on. Um, and then I think you also asked nature or nurture. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the difference? Like, or or yeah. what's like, 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 are we, I I guess it's hard for me. Like, yeah, he came out of the womb that way. <laughs> like, yeah. what does that mean? We're, we're all heavily influenced by experience. Yeah. And our parents and our family members, like, and, and also what we don't see in this cold open or haven't really seen is. I I will say we have yet to be shown the the um the influential moment where where Oz would look as an 11-year-old look at at Rex yep. and see oh he's a gangster. I mm-hmm. I like I I understand this. We don't know. We haven't been shown that. I mean no. so so it's hard to say and yeah. I know, I understand why you raise the question because it gets into what later happens between Sophia and Francis to an extent. Mm-hmm. And um, I think part of it is probably her influence, but but we also see that we don't know when the the disease started with Francis, right? No, no. And I mean, she she was just broken after losing her boys, and it was that exactly. So, yeah. so did in a way did that trauma trigger this illness, and is that also why Oz um, in the previous episode was so down about being unable to help her because arguably he created her. In a mm-hmm. way, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I love, yeah, and that's one of the things of this series is, you know, they, they, it's like chicken or the egg in, in, with a lot of these situations as far as these characters. But I mean, the through line is because Oz does something, it's the catalyst for something else. Um, whether it's his brothers, whether it's his breaking, you know, breaking his mother's spirit. I do like the point. I do like that the fact that you did raise about we did we haven't yet. You know, we've we've seen things through Oz's eyes, and even it, as far as with Rex, I mean, we saw a little bit of it as far as Oz sees Rex as just this benevolent figure that you know we've heard so much about, um, in the sense that you know, because you know, Jack saw saw Rex for who he was, gangster. Oz just happened to still see the guy who like gave Jack the fifty dollars, has this big, this shiny, this shiny car, you know. So Oz still sees him as a hero. Um, but well, you know, but Jack, he says yeah. he's a gangster. Like I know yeah. where he got that money from. He's a gangster. So he yeah. he says it in a way that doesn't. But he doesn't I, even I know what it means. Yeah. Well, no, but what I actually was going to say the opposite. He knows yeah. what it means. Yeah. Like it goes back to what what Francis told tells Sophia in the episode, and mm-hmm. what what Oz or or maybe Francis even said this to Vic at one point. I forget, but I know I've heard a similar conversation before. Is like you don't understand. He got to this point because it's not that he was born into it. It's not that right. he um, yeah. he. But he came about it in a way where he was able to learn, absorb, and take advantage. Yeah. Like, so he knows the game mm-hmm. far better. So, and I, from that remark about uh, Rex at the beginning of being a gangster, 
there was like, and that's who I want to be. So, so yeah, there you glorify him, but it's, it's just, I, I just view it as like, there's a familiarity there yeah. Yeah. where I, I like, he doesn't look up to his older brother. No, he looks up to Rex. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then it, it's got, it, it's hard for me to pull, like pin all of that on Francis when there's the whole mystery of the father like why did the father leave is it rex who is the father if Indeed. if it's not rex and yeah, and i don't think the father's it, rex the more the more right. we talk about it i don't think it is i mean i think they make it very clear that the father he's an absent you know he was clearly an absent father beforehand you know, and he was just, you know, because I, I think there was some, I think Francis may have made some mentions about, you know, he had all these dreams and he talked big, but, you know, had no action, no, you know, no ambition, whatever. And, and so, you know, at, at this point, you know, the, the father figure was in the, you know, for, for the family was at least for Oz was, was, was Rex. I mean, Jack, not, yeah. I don't think so much. Um, Jack didn't well, have and, but that, like that just makes me question why why did that affect Oz in that way and not the other two like especially yeah. the older one because yeah. they all don't have the dad around and and we never f find out his own disability but I don't know so hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is me not knowing what where to go to next because I feel no, like we've no. drowned the right <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I mean, no. I think the, the, I mean, that cold open just has so many, so many levels to it, that does color. I think you know, it does color this this character, but also like as I mentioned before, it gets into this. I think it you know really touches on the whole thematic um, through our through line of this whole series because we do turn, you know, it does set up the great scene between Sophia and, and, and Francis. Um, where you know where you know, they're they're having their back and forth, and you know, and Francis gets in the good line. It's like you know, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, you know, you could change your name, but you're still you know you're still a Falcon. <laughs> you know, you're still who you are. Yeah. And you know, and that that colors Sophia's later interactions with 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 Gia whenever she, they found out that she was possibly going to talk to the police about what really happened. Well, yeah, she she went to have a similar conversation that her dad would would do. So it's like yeah. now that that seed has been planted of doubt in her head, she then does an action that is like, oh, Francis was right. Yeah. Like, and my and, and she's not. I mean, arguably, in my opinion, at the end of the episode, she didn't even change the game. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was a bomb. <laughs> Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I did too. That was that was my one like wibble with no, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. I knew that was my. I was like this. This took a, that 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 whole thing with the with the ending there. It, it bothered me. I had I, I, I that was like for me. That was like that's probably one of the few missteps that this series has taken. <laughs> it just you knew it wasn't. You knew it. The scene went on so freaking long. Yeah, and. It just it wouldn't make any sense for for it to have been Sophia, despite the doubt. You just there's mm. no way you're like we got we got another episode to go. So no. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But what what I did find hilarious um and love was the Sal and Oz um yeah. because for most of this episode Oz spends it with Sal, yeah. and who is wants to kill him with his own two hands continues to not be able to because of this deal that him and Sophia will do that together. Mm -hmm. Like he's on a leash and he's surrounded by what seems to be Sophia's men, not his own men, but Sophia's mm -hmm. men. Yep. So he, he can't, um, but and Oz figures that out. And then, and then it's like, okay, well, let me, let me use that to my advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they ultimately start to get into a fist fight. And then you think like, wow, Oz is not going to make. And then nope, nope, nope. Because Sal has a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, just, I so 
started laughing. And then the moment where Oz is like, no, no, you can't. I mean, <laughs> you, can't, yeah. I mean <laughs> like, you, like, yeah. you know, the, the, that is like a classic okay, we we clearly have to have a way out of the situation um, that's believable. In in mm-hmm. a weird way, it's totally believable. It makes all yep. sense. Yeah, I mean, they're two, old, they're two old guys, like, going at it. You know, we, they, they set it up early. You know, they set it up through, with our earlier you know, scenes oh, yeah. with, with Sal. You know, having to take the heart yeah. med, you know, taking yeah. the blood yeah. pressure meds or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and but but it also... I, I think it was also not just done for 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 there to be a penultimate co- um, confrontation that that Oz gets his way out of. It also because it, yes, he won, but it wasn't the way he wanted to. Exactly. Like he beat yep. now, but it wasn't the way he may have the ring now, but it's still not. And so. With yeah. with Oz and his whole manifesto, I an ego. It mm-hmm. um, it does a lot more for his character to be like, yeah, yeah, he's gonna come out on top, but it's never gonna be exactly on his circumstances because nope. at the end of the day, he's never going to be that person who. He may think he is, Mm -hmm. he may want to be, but it's never going to be him because he's always going to be the kid from the east side with the bum leg. Yep. Like, he can't fix his leg, he can't fix his mom, he killed his brothers. Yep. So, it's just, it it, it is fascinating. It is, Um, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you, yeah, that that you, you, I can't add, add anything more to that. I mean, I think that that's what was that's what made that scene work so so well. Um, because as 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 you said that, um, um, and yeah, and so whenever, yeah, I mean, uh, really, as far as the rest of this episode, I mean, I think that you know, with you know, a lot of just to turn it to the Batman of it all, just for for a moment, um. With I know we were joking about the 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 bomb sequence there and being very predictable, but I mean now I can you know it, it does now take this whole this this gang war that's been going on. Um, it does now that the crown point has a big hole in the middle. <laughs> I mean Batman can't ignore it. So this right. I think that's that that's so I think you know moving moving ahead to the Batman two, and and all. Now it makes sense why Batman, Penguin, I assume Sophia is probably going to survive um, next week. Well, you know, why these, why this gang war now gets his attention. You know, I, during that sequence, I was not at all thinking about the repercussions of the hole in Crown's Peak. I was much more fixated on um, Crown's Point. I was much more fixated on the the uh, parallelism between the cold open and mm-hmm. that scene because it, it like purposely we're made to believe it was the same same yeah. door that he gets out of his men don't get out of just like yeah. with his brothers mm-hmm. and then just the the dust and the sound design of the whole sequence it reminds me of another explosion that happened in a recent thing that I watched that Will did not watch, Joker 2. (laughs) (laughs) This is the right way to do it, not with what happens in the Joker 2. Spoiler alert. (laughs) You do it, okay? This is how you do it. Uh, When I tell you, and and honestly, I find it really amusing that you bring up, like, with this sequence, oh, yeah, and now, like, of course, Batman, because when when you're sitting there watching Joker 2 and the bomb comes out, you first you're just like what the fuck (laughs) and then you're like okay is batman just gonna suddenly appear amidst Mm. the rubble like he did this yeah yeah. (laughs) like this is the most comic book cliche explosion ever not like this this was done so well and then what what and then the very next thing i start to laugh why did i start to laugh because he sees a black guy and is like this (laughs) 
I was just like, that is hilarious for so many reasons. And mm-hmm. also, like, the fact that the number of times either Oz or myself ask throughout this episode, where's Vic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that throughout the episode, too, because, you know, at the very beginning, you know, the beginning. Vic, Vic's concussed after, you know, so he thankfully he lived. You yeah, know, he lived. Yeah, he lived. You know, he didn't get Jason Todd. So... Yeah. Um, he, he wasn't in the car. There was a yeah. bomb because uh, there. I will admit there was a split second when he opens the door. I was like, "Oh, is is Vic in there?" <laughs> I did. I thought I thought that as well. I did too because yeah. he's been gone the whole episode. But I point. I mean, that that was that was a very smart thing that they did as far as misdirection. Um, yeah. Because now, yeah. so granted, granted, the way like they end this with Sophia still has Francis, and and Oz is still has to go and find his ma mm-hmm. you're just like well okay so we're gonna have another what was it episode three where where sophia and oz are at gunpoint and and then vic comes in with the car and say like like th- they set it up for that kind of like we're gonna find out where vic is and he's gonna and because of his remote absence that's gonna allow the escape to happen mm-hmm. um but I think they also had to do that because there was there was so much that needed to be done with Sophia and Francis, Oz, Sal, and Oz as a little boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. that we didn't have time for Vic at the moment. No, no, no. It was it was. I mean, because I think this is probably the shortest runtime for for all the episodes. I think it's only like forty six minutes or something like that. But because I, so yeah, it was it was a packed penultimate episode. Uh, but you're right. I mean, they had to move all the chess pieces, you know, and and give a answer to question about what happened to to um, Oz's brothers, but also, you know, you you know, and then and then they, you know, they. You know, they brought back the whole, because um, I think, you know, didn't they, Ma, Oz and his mom talk about, you know, going to the little the nightclub and dancing and stuff so, in an earlier episode. So they, yeah. you know, they they showed that scene this episode. And then, of course, at the end when Sophia, um, I guess Rush was able to, like, glean out that moment. Um, you know, they take her, you know, we, we, we see at the end episode, they, they go to that same old, that, that same old spot. Uh, for for the final confrontation that we'll get next week yeah yeah we will get the final showdown next week um and on that note will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at will m polk w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can follow me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore Ed underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>